So they are the things that I personally don't like about the rifle. The things I do like about the rifle Three shots, neatly into 0.6 of an inch. Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm checking out the Enfield Arms Genesis 1 rifle. Now this rifle is made in Gympie, Queensland right here in Australia. So there's been quite a few of you who have asked me for my thoughts on it. So uh, anyhow, I got a hold of one. Ron Owen has uh, sent this one to me temporarily on loan so that I can you know, do the review and uh, tell you my honest thoughts from there. So let's show you what it comes with. We've got a printed um, manual here and we've got an inspection card obviously it gets uh test fired etc etc before you know it leaves the um workshop or factory so this one here as you can see we've got some marks on it and everything because it has been uh, used for a previous review i've been told so um, i'm not sure i haven't seen any other reviews of it so i'm just going to tell you my thoughts and everything about the rifle as i feel it performs for me at the time so let's give you a run by of it. The one I've got here is in 223, so they are available in 243, 65 Creedmoor, and 308 at the time of doing this review, I believe. The uh, weight of it, man, I tell you, when you pick this thing up, honestly, it reminds me of a World War II era firearm in that it's heavy, quite bulky. Um, you know, the weight on it exactly is 4.3 kilos or nine and a half pounds. That's without an optical mounts on top. So that to me is a consideration. I mean, if you are planning on getting a rifle to walk around with, um, this probably wouldn't be my choice, uh, you know, due to the weight. And this has a lightweight profile barrel on it as well. So um, 16 inches, so, you know, it's the shortest barrel they offer. They offer between 16 and 32 inches. And, um, you know, it's made from uh, 416R stainless, fully uh, floating, as you can see here, and this is the light profile. So if you had the heavy profile, then obviously there'd be even more weight again. So accuracy-wise out of the barrel, the twist rate is one in eight, so that'd be great for heavier grain ammunition. And they're saying that it's capable of half inch groups at 100 uh, yards using PPU or quality ammunition. I don't know how many shots in that group, it, uh, they don't say, but um, look, I don't have any PPU ammunition. However, I've got a selection of other quality ammo that we'll put through and hopefully it'll take a liking to one or more of those ammunitions, but we'll wait and see when we get out on the farm. Now the fore end here has Picatinny machined into it. Okay, so it's obviously at 12, three, six and nine o'clock positions. Coming back to the receiver, like this thing honestly is built like a tank. If you've seen any of the promo videos, guys, where they're you know, driving over it and throwing it in the mud and everything, if you pick one of these up, you'll be able to understand why it can take such a beating. The barrel itself has two inches of thread uh, locking it into the receiver. The receiver is made from 1075 heat treated carbon steel and the wall thickness is five mil. So, you know, it's certainly no lightweight, uh, flimsy rifle. The internal parts are made from 4140 and the majority of them are heat treated. The magazine is a 10 round MDT mag, so not sure why they wouldn't have gone with the P mag, to be quite honest, but obviously they've gone with this, but still I don't think there'll be any problems with that. The trigger on it, straight away I noticed the trigger guard was fairly small. So yeah, I, I don't know about that. We'll see how it performs out in the field, but the trigger is very spongy. You know, honestly, if you, if this is the first thing that came to my mind when I dry fired it, I felt like I'd picked up a World War II era firearm and uh, squeezed the trigger. It, you know, it's, it's heavy and it's spongy. So four and a half uh, pounds is, uh, you know, the pull weight on it. So look, not super, super heavy, but it still has that real spongy feel. 
The safety here uh, is ambidextrous, so I don't think there'd be any problems with that. On top, we've got the Picatinny rail raised, um, where you can obviously put your uh, scope and uh, you know your mounting system on there. As you can see, I've only just cleared it there because unfortunately, I've only got medium um, Picatinny uh, rings. That's the tallest that I had. So I would probably suggest going for a high and then that'll give you a bit more uh, you know, clearance. So at the back here, we've got a uh, five position adjustable stock. I mean, if you had this in New South Wales, obviously it'd have to be pinned. And there's an adjustment for the um, cheek height as well. So for me, I'm gonna just take that piece off guys because I wanna get that correct side alignment with those lower medium rings. But yeah, I like the idea obviously of having the collapsible stock there because you know if you're out shooting, um, you know, and you've got someone with a shorter length of pulls, you might be you know uh, shooting with the uh, other half or with a child or something, then there can be an easy adjustment you know to their suitable length of pull. On the flip side here, we'll show you the uh, the charging handle as such. So all you do is you just I'll try to get this on camera. Once it's forward, if you pull back, you can just push in behind the recess there for it to lock open. So all the way back and then just push down and then that'll lock the action open. So taking it down, I'll just put the uh, action forward. It's pretty straightforward here. At the back, you've got a button just above basically the castle nut here. So all you need to do is just push that in and when you're pushing it in, just turn anti-clockwise with the stock, okay? So do that and there's a spring that is retained in there and all of that can come out. So broken down, we've got the uh, main spring here, obviously goes into the uh, tubular stock and the bolt itself. And look, this is built like a tank. So to clean the bolt a little bit further, all you need to do is take the cam pin out and it's a little bit different to a normal AR cam pin as in this just falls straight out and then you just pull the bolt itself out. So easy cleaning and you can just put that straight back in and drop the cam pin back in there as well. Just like so. So yeah, all back together again now. So on the Cerakote here guys, um, you know, the Cerakote looks like quite a nice job. You can see some marks here because, you know, this has been obviously uh, used previously to me getting it naturally. So, um, you know, don't think that's how it would come out. Obviously, if you bought one of these, um, you know, it would come out brand new naturally. So uh, price, let's talk about that. Uh, made here in Australia. So, um, you know, hat off to Ron Owen for that. The price um, that I've been told that I've, I've seen floated around the traps is $1,595. So if it's a little bit cheaper from other dealers, you know, perhaps it is but that's the um, recommended retail price. All right, so guys, um, let's get out on the farm now. I wanna see what ammo this rifle likes and I wanna see how it feels to use it in the field and give you my honest thoughts on it. All right, so the selection of ammo I've got to run through the Genesis today is the Hornady 55 grain VMAX. Then we'll go to the OSA loaded with the 55 grain uh, Sierra Game King. Then I've got some Outback ammo loaded with the 55 grain um, Blitz King. Then we'll go up to Federal Premium with the 62 grain uh, Trophy Bonded Tip. And then last of all, I've got some Cellular and Bellet uh, 69 grain match. So not sure how that'll go, we'll just see. So yeah, good selection of different um, brands and obviously bullet weights. So we'll shoot uh, three shot groups there at 100 and hopefully we'll just get one or two ammunitions that this rifle takes a liking to, and then we can zero it from there.
All right, we started with the uh, Hornady V Max. I have never ever seen it shoot that bad in all the testing that I've ever done. Uh, it does not like that. Almost three and a half inches. Going to be about three, yeah, about three point four inches, almost three and a half inches there. So yeah, no, it definitely does not favour that ammunition. However, then we come down to the OSA loaded with the fifty-five grain. Uh, Game King and we've got three shots neatly into 0.6 of an inch. Then when we come up from there we've uh, tried the Outback ammo loaded with 55 grain uh, Blitz King and yeah gee she spread there too. Almost two inches. So yeah it doesn't like uh, that polymer tip ammunition by the look of it. Then uh, we decided to go up to a little bit um, heavier 62 grain um, trophy bonded tip from Federal Premium and yeah, same thing there, almost two inches. Yep, two inches, so yep, it doesn't like that either. Then I thought, okay, well let's try some Cellular and Bellet um, 69 grain match, see if we can bring it in a little bit more there. And yeah, I'm not impressed with that either. Uh, 1.6 inches. So guys, the uh, clear um, winner of the day is the OSA loaded with the 55 grain Game King. I've had some really good results with that on uh, other rifles as well. So that's what I'm going to zero this rifle for. Loading the included MDT magazine is really straightforward. Just push down, push the rounds under the lip and to the rear. Have to admit, I've had no problems with the magazine. You know, it's fed reliably and no jams at all. Okay guys, I'm going to wrap up my final thoughts on the Genesis 1 rifle. Before I do, quickly, if you can just pause this video guys, please check your subscription to me because YouTube are taking my subscribers away from me without your permission. People are having to resubscribe eight and nine times. So please just pause the video, check your subscription, enable the bell icon, give us a thumbs up, it helps out greatly. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Genesis 1 rifle. There's a few things that I don't like about the rifle. I have to be honest, and you guys know I'm well known for calling it the way it is. So this rifle will be no different. Um, I will tell you my likes and dislikes of it. So my dislikes of it, first of all, is just the, the cosmetic appearance. This part here, the real retro look, to me, I, I don't like the look of that. Um, also to the magazine, like I mean, the button release here at the bottom is easy enough if you're using your opposite hand to take that mag on and off. But for me, I'd much prefer a ARP mag. You know, so, so you'd have the button release right here so you could just drop the mag on the run and then in with another mag and away you go. I also don't like how small the trigger guard is on this. Now, you look at it there, okay, I get my finger pretty much just through there. If I had gloves on, I'd probably hit that trigger and then possibly, you know, fire it unintentionally. So for me, I'd like to see a bigger trigger guard as well. The trigger, yes, it's spongy. It feels very retro, this uh, rifle in general. If you're used to shooting rifles from, you know, many, many years ago, um, the trigger feels, you know, very much like that. It's just a very spongy trigger, but I had no issues with it. I was still able to shoot accurately with it, but it's certainly um, not like a modern feel uh, that you may experience in some of your AR type equivalent platforms. Uh, the other thing that I don't like about it, guys, is just how they've got the raised Picatinny 
uh, rail here on the receiver, I'd prefer to see just one full length rail. You know, then you could just use all your AR uh, type optic mounts, no problem whatsoever. I'd also like to see like M-Lock on the, on the fore end here so that you don't have to have all this Picatinny here. You could just place some Picatinny here if you wanted to, you know, add a torch for example or, or something like that. Um, the weight as well guys, this thing is heavy. Um, if you're walking around with it all day long, it's going to weigh you down. There's no two ways about it. So they are the things that I personally don't like about the rifle. The things I do like about the rifle, uh, yes, the adjustability with the rear stock there, fantastic, because obviously if you're shooting and someone's got a longer length of pull or less than yourself, then you can easily adjust that, you know, to accommodate them. Uh, the action. Beautiful and smooth, there's no two ways about it. Um, it's built like a tank, this thing. Um, there's no two ways about it and probably why it's so heavy. But you're not going to kill this thing in the field. That's what I do like about it. The accuracy, yes, I would have liked to have seen more accuracy with a wider range of ammunition. And I didn't have any PPU available even though uh, they suggest using it through this rifle. But I'm more than happy with that OSA loaded with the 55 grain Sierra Game King. You know, very much sub MOA accuracy with that. So I uh, can't ask for much more than that. So yeah, guys, overall I have, you know, little mixed feelings on the rifle, but I'm just telling you what I like and what I don't like. So I'd love to hear what you think of the Australian made Genesis one. Good on them for doing it, but I'd love to see those couple of improvements myself. Okay, guys, we'll leave the review at that. So hope you enjoyed watching. So till next time, we'll catch you then.